Rigging Station, brought to you by Diamond Fishing Products, most reliable monofilament and braided fishing line in the world. Today we're going to make a couple swordfish baits. You know, day timing's the new thing and it's a great way to, you know, save some sleep and get tight on some big swordfish. So we're going to show you what it takes to make some baits that are durable enough to, you know, stand up to the, the currents and the depths that we're dropping them down. We're fishing on the bottom for about 30 to 45 minutes per drift, so you want a bait that's really durable, something that'll take a beating if a swordfish does come around and give it a good smack but doesn't get the hook in them. So a couple tools we're going to use. I got a nice fillet knife, pretty stiff. A little bait knife right here helps make some more precise incisions. And then a couple pairs of heavy duty scissors and some shears. We're going to make our first cut here. Just go right under the peck fin. Give a nice frozen bonita. It's going to cut through real well. If it's real fresh, it's going to be a little softer and tear up the meat a little bit. So I do like to ice them down a little before. From here, I'm just going to follow all the way down the backbone. It's important here, you want to save a lot of this meat, so this is where you want to go slow. And, and oftentimes here is when I'll grab my bait knife just to make sure I don't miss any cuts. And with all kind of situations where you're using a sharp knife, it is important that your knife is really sharp and having a dull knife can actually be dangerous. You can cut yourself pretty easily because you're, you're using more force to get the blade to go through the meat than what's actually needed. My second cut is going to be along the belly right here. You don't need to go too deep because what we're going to eventually do is shave off a lot of this meat. So we're really just trying to salvage the skin. That's, that's the most important aspect. I want to save as much of this tail meat as I can. So I go real slow. The backbone comes out right here. See, this is all nice soft meat right here. Your blade will slice right through it. But as you get towards this tail, the meat comes to an end and there's all bone. You want to shave down into the tail a little bit too. This is going to give your bait a really natural swimming action because it's going, to, it's going to have something to move in the current rather than just the bait just ending abruptly. Now I just want to separate this fillet from the bone. A lot of people have different ideas of what's the best bait. I like a small bait that's really durable with a long tail but not too long. Some people like to fish giant baits. I don't know if anyone really knows but they all work for the most part. I'm going to save the rest of this. We'll get another bait out of the other side. And here's what we have. We have our nice strip from the side of the fish. It's got our nice little tail on there. So from here, we're going to take off a majority of this, probably over 90% of the meat from here. And we're going to start by making two cuts around the edge of the backbone here. See all the bones coming up in the bloodline right there. We want to get that out first. And this is going to help when we take this out, there's going to be a channel and then the bait will be able to fold up together. And it's important that you make really shallow, soft cuts because if you slice through too deep, all that work of catching your bonita and freezing them, and then just cutting them. What we did right there took a few minutes. If you get a nice little channel cut from here, we're going to trim it up more later, but we can start going to the side sections of this. So we're just going to keep shaving this off. Having a really sharp knife helps out big time here. Out of the skin of the tail, we're going to want to take off completely all this meat and just keep this nice tail piece. And a lot of it, if you just pull gently, it'll rip right from the skin. It separates perfectly. All right, so you can see our, our bait's getting a little slimmer. We'll continue to get a lot of this stuff out of here. Every once in a while, you can fold it over, make sure it's gonna line up perfectly. You see I got a little bulge in the center there, so I'm gonna wanna trim down some more, take some bones out there. You want everything to come together nice and perfectly, so there's no wobbles. I mean, you're thinking about this thing swimming in the current, Current's normally moving around four miles an hour, four knots. That's, that's a good speed for a bait, to, a fake bait, to, to want to look natural. So it's important that it is perfectly symmetrical like a real fish would be, or a squid, or whatever. These swords are down there chasing. You want it to look like that. You can see it's a little uneven, so I'm still going to want to clean out some of that. But the eventual goal is to have this skirt and have the bait tuck up right nice under the head. And you can see how wide it is there. I still have to trim it. 
we can make a little teardrop effect so it kind of tucks up perfectly. And I might even shorten the bait a little bit too. I'm thinking something like that will be nice. So I might take off about an inch and I'm going to teardrop it a little bit, flatten this out. So it's a tedious process, but a bait like this will last a good amount of time in the water. Fish it all day if you don't get a bite. And I've even frozen some and used them again, caught fish a couple weeks down the line. So I don't think this is just a bait you're going to throw away at the end of the day. This, this takes time and it's worth doing it right and saving it, making it last. So now I have a basic starting point. I'm going to trim it down so it's nice and even. I'm going to make sure everything lines up evenly. Almost there. Now I'm just going to finish up, coming tight to the head. And that is pretty much the foundation for our daytime strip. It's pretty good to me. I've already made here, this is an 11-0 razor sharp hook. It's on about a five or six foot length of 300 pound monofilament. Got my hook crimped on there, and you'll see I left a little bit of a tag in. Now the reason for this extra length, your tag in right here, is because it's gonna enable your bait to hang a little bit lower in the bait rather than being tucked up right to the head. So from here, I wanna measure out a little bit of space and I'm gonna take note of where my hook is gonna come out. And you wanna make sure it comes out right where the shank starts to bend. Otherwise you'll have your bait will bind or it won't be tight. So I'm going to take a mark, and all I'm going to do is just make a little, little imprint with my hook so I know where it's from. So now I'm going to come down from the other side. I'm going to find this hole, and I'm going to pierce it through. Hopefully it lines up right where I wanted it to. It's pretty good. Pretty good. You'll see the, this bait starting to come together now. That's what the final product's going to eventually look like. Now here, I'm going to slide my other crimp down onto the top end of my leader. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of a distance between the first crimp and the second crimp. I'm gonna make sure that hole that I'm gonna pierce right here is in line with my hook. So everything sits perfectly straight. Now, take a tag in, go through the hole you just made with your rigging needle. You can see how it sits nice. See how it's just pinched a little bit? I'll slide your crimp over the tag. Make sure when you pull on the leader that the hook isn't binding. See how it's nice, everything's nice and straight and the hook isn't bent or anything. It's not kinked, cockeyed, whatever you want to call it. That means that your bait's going to swim pretty straight. So there, I'm going to butt it up nice and tight to there, but not too tight to the point where it rips that skin because that skin can be pretty, pretty fragile right there. Make a couple crimps, lock this down. Now I'm going to do is trim my tag in. And I've got a sword bait coming together. When I pull on the leader right here, the hook stays nice and straight. It's not binding, it's not pulling on the head of the bait first or anything, it's pulling right where you want it to. So now that I can tell kind of how my bait is going to look when it's pulling through the water, I can go back in and I can clean up this edge even more. You can see how small this bait got from where it started with that big bonita. But this is it's all you need to catch a big swordfish. So now we're ready to start stitching up our bait and we've got our rigging floss and I've got a closed eye rigging needle, you'll see right there. Now you can use an open eye, but when you're stitching through, you're gonna eventually pass the floss through the same hole twice as you come back from the bottom, and an open eye rigging needle will occasionally catch the thread that's already in there, and that can just tangle and make a headache. So this, you tie a knot on the end, you make sure that it won't pull anything, and it, it, it really saves you in the long run, so. Now about three to four foot section of this rigging floss, and we're gonna start. All we're gonna do is pass about six inches through the eye of the needle, and this six inches of a tag is so when we come back from stitching the tail, we'll have this to tie and close off the top of the bait. I'm just gonna make an overhand knot to lock this line down, like that. Pull the two ends tight, and you'll see the line creep its way down. So now we're ready to start. Now I'm just gonna pierce a hole right here in the top and the whole time you're doing this bait, you want to make sure that the bait is nice and symmetrical. 
If anything's uneven, your bait's not gonna swim right. So we look good on both sides. Might just take a little more off. I mean, it's all just about what looks good and what you have confidence in. So take all this with a grain of salt. Now here, I've got my needle on one side. You can see the needle here. And I'm pulling the rest of this about four foot section through. Now I'll make another overhand knot, simple overhand knot. See that now here's, I got a little short tag in. I'm gonna bring my needle through. Pull tight. And there you go, the top of the bait is ready to start stitching. Now you see that I've got a tag on the top of the bait and I have a tag coming from what will be the bottom of the bait. Now those two tags are gonna tie together on the end and that's gonna be the final step. So now we're just gonna start stitching all the way down the side of the bait, anywhere from a half inch to an inch away from each other. You don't wanna to be too close to the edge or you can pull through. And it's important that you don't make them too tight on this first pass because that could have the bait bind or it might not sit well. And as you're going, you're working your way down the bait, every once in a while you wanna flip it over and make sure that your, your hole that you're making is in the right spot. Now here, see if I pull really tight, you see that? See how tight I pull that and it's making the bait cinch up and bind and the hook's coming off? You don't want that. You want those to be nice, not loose, but not super tight. Keep working my way down the bait every half inch or so. Now this, this whole rigging technique really came from what is known as a Panama strip. Down in Central America, trolling for billfish, marlin, sailfish, striped marlin, whatever it may be, they would stitch baits like this and they would also use them also sometimes as hookless teasers when fly fishing. So this isn't a new technique, it's just developed into daytime sword fishing down here in South Florida and, and now across other parts of the world too, where they're trying sword fishing. So I don't want to come all the way down on the tail. I'm going to make maybe one, maybe one more. This one I'm going to go in twice. You'll see going through twice in the same hole, it's going to lock this line in. So everything I just did working its way down the bait, if I accidentally pull on one of these little loops, it's, going to, it's not going to cinch, it's not going to make the bait bind. So there, I made my first, I'm going back in that second hole. And you'll see there's going to be a straight line right right there. See how it comes tight? Lock. Pull that tight a little bit and now none of these that I've already made are moving. They're stuck. So now I'm going to go back up through the same exact holes and it's going to make a perfect little zigzag crisscross pattern up the side of the bait. And this is what I was mentioning about using an open eye needle. When you're going through the same hole, you could grab the line that you've already, you've already worked your way down and insert it in with that needle. And then if you pull on it, it's gonna make the whole bait just not the way you want it to be. It's a very tedious process, but you gotta think here, we're going after fish upwards of 500 pounds. They've caught larger ones out here. I'm just gonna make a handful of random incisions up here in the head just trying to tighten this up. And this is all gonna be tucked in underneath that skirt, so it's not gonna make a whole difference. We've stitched up our bait, you can see, nice and symmetrical. Pulling the leader, it's not, not binding on the bait at all. Pull through the water nice. So I'm just gonna take these two tag ends. I'm gonna make another overhand knot. And that'll about end the game here. All right, so now you can see the line is going around the mono. And this is just gonna help kind of really button that up. All right, so once we've got that last knot in there, trim that, and there we have it. 
got a nice daytime strip. Durable, streamlined, it's ready. It's just about ready. So now we're gonna pick our skirt. All we're gonna do is take a little shears and we're gonna wanna just take a tiny hole off the top of here. So I'm gonna start it with my rigging needle. But you gotta get the 300 pound through there, so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger with this bait knife. Go through the bottom of the skirt. Here comes my skirt. Gently pop it over that top crimp right there. Oh, it's beautiful. Check that out. There you have it. There's a Bonita strip, stitched up, skirted, ready to drop. Rigging Station, brought to you by Diamond Fishing Products, most reliable monofilament and braided fishing line in the world.